so hello hello all welcome to my lecture this is of cornea i am dr supriya mushra associate associate professor in department of ophthalmology so to start with uh, this is of cornea you should know the different classification keratitis in its classification so the inflammation of cornea this is the definition of keratitis inflammation of cornea is keratitis and it is characterized by corneal edema cellular infiltration and ciliary congestion now what are the different classifications of cornea keratitis sorry now the different types of classification of keratitis is divided on the basis of morphological and etiological classification on the ulcerative keratitis there is corneal ulcer and we further classified variously depending on location central to corneal ulcer and peripheral corneal ulcer so on to the on to depending on the location the corneal ulcer divided into central and peripheral corneal on the, uh, on the this is a purulence it is divided under purulent corneal ulcer or suppurative corneal ulcer most mostly bacterial and fungal corneal ulcer which are suppurative now non purulent corneal ulcer is mostly of viral and chlamydial in nature now allergic conjunctivitis uh, can be also be there depending on the association of hypopion if a simple corneal ulcer without hypopion and hypopion corneal ulcer on the basis of depth of corneal ulcer it is divided into superficial corneal ulcer deep corneal ulcer corneal ulcer with impending perforation and perforated corneal ulcer depending on depth of ulcer superficial corneal ulcer deep corneal ulcer corneal ulcer with impending perforation perforated corneal ulcer and depending on the slow formation there can be non slowing corneal ulcer and slowing corneal ulcer now on the basis of ulcer, non ulcerative keratitis uh, this uh, keratitis is divided into superficial keratitis and deep keratitis superficial keratitis and no Uh, consist of diffuse superficial keratitis and superficial punctate keratitis and deep keratitis consist of non superficial keratitis and superficial keratitis disiform keratitis keratitis profunda sclerosing keratitis superficial deep keratitis central corneal abscess and posterior corneal abscess now this is the classification of for differential diagnosis of corneal ulcer bacterial on the basis of this bacterial fungal viral parasite risk factors of bacterial corneal ulcer include contact lens wear particularly overnight use or poor hygiene and adequate disinfection trauma chronic steroid use exposure to contaminated water or soil anesthetic cornea secondary infection superimposed on viral keratitis dry eyes exposure to bacteria and the clinical features of bacterial corneal ulcer, ulcer includes physical symptoms and signs hypopion if uh, present is fluid and mobile sidermanas aeruginosa is particularly likely to have rapid course with deep or extensive corneal necrosis as a fungal corneal ulcer risk factors include trauma with vegetative matter clinical features include relatively less pain and watering compared to the loss of vision and ulcerative signs tend to be indolent but progressive hypopion present is thick and mobile and may even have a convex upper surface viral low immunity recurrent attacks relative more pain and watering compared to the extent of vision loss and ulcerative signs recurrences are characteristic of the parasitic like acanthamoeba uh, corneal ulcer risk factors are contact lens wears Mm, uh, and exposure to contaminated water a cantriba or visit uh, an endemic zone of on like onchocerciasis this proportion is severe uh, pain is a characteristic feature of cantriba in blue ulceration indolent course and are often initially uh, mistaken to be viral and fungal leading to delay in the diagnosis Now to start with bacterial corneal ulcer. Infective corneal ulcer may develop when either to the local ocular defect mechanism is breached. There is uh, some local ocular predisposing disease, dry eye, blepharitis, dactrocystitis, or immunity is compromised, which uh, due to AIDS or DM, and the causative organism is very virulent. the positive organism is very virulent 
to start with bacterial corneal ulcer infective corneal ulcer may develop when either, either the local ocular defense or mechanism is breached there is a some local ocular predisposing disease like dry eye blepharitis dermatitis host immunity is mostly compromised due to aids or diabetic mellitus the causative organism is very virulent now the causes of bacterial corneal ulcer can be first due to damage to corneal epithelium due to corneal abrasion epithelial drying necrosis of epithelium disformation of epithelial cells epithelial dermatic changes infection of the eroded area can be due to exogenous and endogenous cause and endogenous cause and or from the ocular tissue now the etiology of bacterial keratitis most common bacteria which is associated with corneal ulceration or Cephalococcus aureus, Pseudomonas pyrocyanea, Streptococcus pneumonia, E. coli, Proteus, Klebsiella, and Gonorrhea, and Meningitis, and Diphtheria. As a pathology of localized corneal ulcer, first stage of corneal ulcer is stage of progressive infiltration. Here in the diagram, you can see the other infiltration is uh, growing from superficial to deeper layer. Then the second stage is stage of active ulceration. Now due to infiltration, there is ulcer formation. Then there is a stage of regression, and then followed by stage of cicatrization, which causes fibrosis and opacity in the cornea. Now the second is pathology of perforated corneal ulcer, which includes perforation of the corneal ulcer, which occurs when the ulcerative process depends and returns up to the descendant membrane. As we all know, descendant membrane is the toughest membrane, and it is uh, uh, responsible for maintaining the ocular integrity. So if this membrane is tough and bulges out, uh, it is causes desmetocele, which is a characteristic feature of impending corneal ulcer. Then the third is pathology of slowing corneal ulcer and formation of anterior stephanoma. When the infecting agent is highly virulent and our body resistance is very low, the whole cornea slows out. This with the exception of a narrow rim and the margin and total prolapse of iris opus. This is the desmetosil. This diagram shows desmetosil where the desmet is uh, just breached, about to breach. And this is the stage of impending corneal ulcer. Uh, impending, uh, impending perforation of corneal ulcer. On this, uh, after which the stage comes is perforated corneal ulcer, where we can see here iris prolapse is there. Now the broadly bacterial corneal ulcer may manifest as purulent corneal ulcer without hyperpion or hyperpion corneal ulcer. Symptoms which include pain or foreign body sensation, watering reflex, hyperlacrimation, photophobia, blurred vision, redness of eyes and which uh, characterized by sulcum corneal condition. Signs of uh, uh, the corneal ulcer includes lid swelling, blepharospasm. Lid swelling, blepharospasm means the uh, um, difficulty in opening of eyelids uh, due to photophobia, conjunctival chemosis, conjunctival hyperemia, and ciliary condition. Corneal ulcer usually starts as, a, as an epithelial defect associated uh, with the uh, corneal ulcer usually starts with as an epithelial defect associated with grayish white circumcised infiltrated stromal edema, which causes well established bacterial ulcer and is characterized by yellowish white area uh, of ulcer, which may be or irregular in shape. Then comes anterior chamber reaction, which may or may not be uh, show pus. Uh, in bacterial corneal ulcer, the hypopion remains sterile. So as long as the desmet membrane is intact, iris may be slightly muddy in color, pupil may be small due to associated toxin induced iritis, intraocular pressure may sometimes may be raised. Bacterial corneal ulcer without hypopion, uh, uh, it includes, this is a diagram with uh, bacterial corneal ulcer without hypopion. Here we can see margins of the ulcer are the swollen. Here we can see margins of ulcer swollen and overhanging. Floor of ulcer is covered with necrotic material and stromal edema is present surrounding the ulcer. Factors predisposing to development of hyperpion, the virulence of the infecting organism, the resistance of the tissues, hyperpion ulcer are much more common in old, debilitated, and alcoholic subjects. So these are the factors which predispose to the bacterial corneal ulcer. Uh, uh, sorry, predispose development of hyperpion. Because uh, because uh, uh, as the patient ages or who is alcoholic, the immunity is low. So increase in hyperpion occurs. 
and the mechanism of hypervalent formation in corneal ulcer includes because bacterial toxin lead to iritis. This causes leukocytes, which comes from the iris blood vessels, and then gravitate into the anterior chamber, and thus formation of hypervalent occurs, which is sterile in nature. Whereas in fungal uh, corneal ulcer, hypervalent which uh, formation is a uh, sterile. I will will be telling it this thing in my upcoming slides of fungal corneal ulcer. And the complications of corneal ulcer include toxic iridocyclitis due to uh, the toxins uh, secreted by bacteria, it causes toxic iridocyclitis. Now, then, secondary glaucoma, then, desmetrosil. Secondary glaucoma can be due to uh, the tuberculitis and uh, clogging of trabular meshwork due to uh, the um, pus cells. This causes secondary glaucoma. Desmetrosil is another complication of uh, corneal ulcer. Perforation of corneal ulcer lead to sequelae of corneal perforation, prolapse of iris, subluxation of anterior dislocation of lens, anterior capsular cutter, corneal fistula, brilliant uveitis, endothelmitis, intraocular hemorrhage, vitreous hemorrhage, or expansive choroidal hemorrhage, then corneal scarring. These are the various uh, complications of corneal ulcer. Routine uh, laboratory investigation for corneal ulcer includes hemoglobin, and the, uh, total leukocyte count, differential leukocyte count, is, uh, is ESR, blood sugar, complete urine and stool examination in each case, micropyological investigation into material is obtained by strapping of the base and the margin of the corneal ulcer, which include uh, under local anesthesia, uh, under 2% xylocaine, with the help of modified chimera spatula or the bent tip of the 20 gauge hypodermic needle. Uh, after which, a gram in gym cell staining of the, uh, uh, of the material is done with 10% also by 10% KOH wet preparation and colcofluor white stain is done and separate dextra agar or hunger for hunger hyphae is done. Management of corneal insert include general principle which include control on infection, use of antibiotics and antifungal or antiviral. Symptomatic relief can be done by painkiller like NSAID, cleanliness, hot fermentation to prevent stress, clinical uh, circulation and repair, and rest cyclopitis like atropine to prevent ciliary spasm. Treatment of bacterial corneal ulcer can be done by using antibiotic, which can be fortified in nature. Fortified uh, antibiotic includes fortified uh, cefazolin and tobramycin, uh, which comes uh, under 5% concentration, 1.3% uh, concentration respectively, which is uh, done, uh, made preparation is done. It is not available uh, in market. We have to make it by the preparation given by air sterile water to 500 milligram of cefazolin dry powder to make 10 ml solution and refrigerate to use and, and use within seven days. In the same way, tobramycin 1.3% fortified solution is prepared by injection 2 ml of tobramycin, that is 40 mg per ml of tobramycin injection in a 5 ml ml of bottle of commercially available 0.3% tobramycin drop. Rate this fortified tobramycin used within 14 days. Alternative drugs for tropical treatment of bacterial corneal ulcer is fortified vancomycin and fluoroquinolones. Fortified vancomycin come under 0.3% uh, concentration, which is made by adding sterile water to 500 mg of vancomycin dry powder to form 10 ml solution, refrigerate, and use within four days. Administrator one hourly round the clock for the first 48 hours, then decrease to two hourly during the day and four hourly night. Once healing is ensured, further decrease in four to six hourly. Administrate one hourly round in clock for the first 48 hour, then decrease uh, to the two hourly during the day and four hourly night. And once the healing is ensured, further decrease by four to six hourly. This is the frequency of all the fortified uh, drops meant. Treatment of uncomplicated bacterial corneals which includes first monotherapy with a single fluoroquinolone as explained in table, ciprofloxacin 0.3%, moxifloxacin uh, is the only drop which is 0.5% concentration less of fluoxacin or 0.3% concentration fortified antibiotic not commercially available and have to prepare for available injection as explained in table. Atropine drops 1% two or three times a day to prevent ciliary spasm. B, prevent formation of posterior synecky, and C, prevent already formed synecky. Hot fermentation in, in dark goggles or other uh, 
treatment options use of steroid is controversial it is a double edged sword as it decreases healing and it restart epithelialization but it is controversial it should not be used in bacterial uh, corneal ulcer should be used cautiously under proper antibiotic coverage to decrease inflammation uh, vitamin a b and c can be given as systemic antibiotic and systemic acid can be done accordingly treatment of complicated bacterial corneal ulcer non healing corneal ulcer removal of any known cause of non healing corneal ulcer local cause retrocystitis be systemic cause which is diabetic mellitus malnutrition steroid use then mechanical debridement which uh, other treatment of complicated bacterial corneal ulcer and third is cauterization of the ulcer may be performed with pure carbolic acid and 10 to 20% trichloroacetic acid fourth is vendor soft contact lens uh, and fifth is peritomy that is severing of perilimbal and Tubal vessels may be performed, and then secondary glaucoma can be treated by 0.5 dimolol milliliter, which is given in BD dose or an acetonitrile. Desmetrosil can be healed accordingly, uh, treated accordingly, should be treated accordingly. By uh, and perforation of corneal ulcer and corneal scarring is other uh, is, uh, is the other complication which should be treated accordingly. now how desmetrosil is treated or impending perforation treated or managed first we should tell the patient for not to do straining exercises or strain work where he should avoid sneezing coughing and straining during the stool etc strict bed rest pressure bandage should be given to a patient with desmetrosil now the lowering of intraocular pressure can be done by uh, oral or topical anti glaucoma drugs another tissue adhesive glue such as cyanocrylate can be given for the closing of uh, bending perforation conjunctival flap uh, can be given that like gundersen flap on bandages of contact lens can be given to such patient and penetrating therapeutic keratoplasty can be done the treatment of perforated corneal ulcer best is to prevent perforation immediate measure should be take to restore the integrity of perforated cornea uh, and depending upon the size of perforation and availability of measures like the use of tissue adhesive can be done for the corneal perforation of less than 2 mm size uh, with or it can be done by covering with conjunctival flap use of bandage for contact lens and therapeutic keratoplasty best is the urgent therapeutic keratoplasty management of perforated corneal Ulcer. Corneal scarring. The corneal scarring is the other complication of corneal ulcer. Nebular corneal opacity uh, should be treated by rigid gaze permeable contact lens. And leucomatous corneal opacity uh, is uh, with visual potential can be treated by lamellar keratoplasty for superficial opacity and penetrating keratoplasty for full thickness uh, opacity. Corneal scars with no visual potential to hide blemish and cosmetic contact lens and tattooing of a scar is done in blind eyes with Indian ink and impregnation uh, impregnation. Uh, with gold or platinum fungal or mycotic corneal ulcer or fungal keratitis etiology can be any type of fungal most commonly uh, aspergillus fumigatus candida and fusarium injury is done by vegetative materials or animal tin chronic steroid use or oral topical uh, steroid use is another uh, uh, reason for fungal uh, corneal ulcer Mycotic corneal ulcer clinical features can be symptoms are milder than size in opposed to the bacterial uh, uh, corneal ulcer, where uh, symptoms are more than signs. And here signs are more than symptoms in fungal corneal ulcer. Weasley ring. This is the MCQ question which can come. Um, Weasley ring, sterile immune ring, yellow ring, with the characteristic feature of fungal corneal ulcer. It is dry looking corneal ulcer. Pseudo hypopion, which is uh, not sterile, unlike uh, bacterial corneal ulcer, as fungi can penetrate anterior chamber without perforation. Satellite lesion and feathery ring is characteristic feature of fungal corneal ulcer, like extension into surrounding stroma. Perforation is rare. Corneal vascularization uh, is conspicuously absent. Management of mycotic corneal ulcer. Specific treatment include antifungal drug for a long period, six to eight weeks. Natamycin can be given five percent eye drop, fluconazole zero point two percent eye drop, and mistreating three point five percent eye ointment. Systemic antifungal drug may be required for severe cases of fungal keratitis. Tablet fluconazole or ketoconazole may be given for two to three weeks.
and non specific treatment include general measures which are similar to that of bacterial corneal ulcer uh, as we have discussed earlier and ultimately the treatment uh, in the last stage can be done by therapeutic penetrating keratoplasty now comes viral corneal ulcer which is caused by a virus it is also known as virus viral keratitis it uh, under it comes herpes simplex keratitis herpes zoster of helmicus keratitis and adenovirus keratitis herpes simplex virus are two are of two type hsv1 typically cause infection above the waist hsv type 2 below the waist and herpes zoonitis ocular lesion of herpes simplex primary herpes first attack involve a non immune uh, in children periorbital vesicular lesions and conjunctival acute follicular conjunctivitis usually self limiting but sometimes latent, latent infection occurs in trigeminal lesion cornea includes final epi, fine epithelial punctate keratitis and coarse epithelial punctate keratitis and dendritic ulcer This is the four presentation of viral keratitis. In the first uh, lesion of recurrent herpes simplex keratitis, first picture shows punctate epithelial keratitis. Second picture uh, B and C. Second picture shows dendritic ulcer. Third shows geographic ulcer. And um, uh, this is the actual picture of the fungal corneal ulcer. How it is looked. And fourth picture is the stromal or disiform keratitis. These are the four ways in which herpes, herpes simplex keratitis can represent. Now, the recurrent herpes keratitis due to recurrence of lateral infection in gazerian ganglion, due to stress, steroid overuse, and ill health. Uh, active epithelial keratitis, punctate epithelial keratitis, dendritic ulcer, geographical ulcer, second is stromal keratitis, disiform keratitis, diffuse stromal nephrotic keratitis, trophic keratitis, and herpetic aridocyclitis. Now the dendritic ulcer, which is the characteristic feature of viral uh, herpes keratitis, it is an ulcer of an irregular zigzag, a linear branching shape. The branches are generally not at the ends. Now the floor of the ulcer stains with the fluorescein, and the virus laden cells at the margin take a crossbind wall. Hence, the term is known as dual staining because the floor is taken by the fluorescein. And the margin is taken by rose bengal by the dead and devitalized tissue and the viruses. There is an associated marked diminution of corneal sensation in this type of corneal ulcer. Geographical ulcer, dendritic ulcer, and large colitis. A large epithelial ulcer with a geographical uh, umbrella contraction, hence the name. Due to the overuse of steroid in dendritic ulcer, due to geographical ulcer. Symptoms of epithelial keratitis are photophobia and lacrimal pain. Stromal keratitis, disiform keratitis, due to delayed hypersensitive reaction. It occurs due to delayed hypersensitive reaction to the HSV antigen. Now it causes low-grade stromal inflammation and damage to the underlying epithelium. Endothelial damage results in corneal edema. Focal disc-shaped patch of stromal edema can, can be seen. Folds of desmoid membrane and keratic precipitates can be seen. Ring of a stromal infiltrate, weasley immune ring is can be seen. It signifies the junction between viral antigen and host antibody. Corneal sensation is diminished. Intraocular pressure may be raised. And second is diffuse stromal necrotic keratitis. Now the metaherpetic lesions. Metaherpetic keratitis, also known as epithelial steroid trophic ulceration, is not an active viral disease. It uh, is a mechanical healing problem similar to the recurrent traumatic erosion, which occur at the site of previous herpetic ulcer. Clinically, it presents as endolent linear or ovoid epithelial defect. Now, the treatment of herpes simplex ocular disease. It includes epithelial keratitis, which should be treated by antiviral drugs like acyclovir, three percent ointment, five times a day until ulcer heals, and then three times a day for five days. Then acyclovir, point one five percent gel can be given five times a day, uh, and other is trifluorothiamidin, one percent of two hourly until ulcer heals, and then four times a day. Adenine, arabinine, cyanide, vedarabine, three percent ointment, five times a day until ulcer heals. Non-specific supportive. non specific supported therapy as in bacterial keratitis 
treatment of stromal keratitis and metaherpetic keratitis. It can be done by steroid eye drop unstilled four to five times a day with an antiviral cover and cyclone with 3% twice a day. Steroid should be tempered over a period of several weeks. Keratoplasty is the last resort for the treatment. Treatment of metaherpetic lesion, as we have discussed earlier, it should be promoted, promoting healing by use of lubricating artificial tears, mended soft contact lens, and lip closure transferrophy. Now comes herpes zoster ophthalmicus keratitis. Herpes zoster ophthalmicus uh, is a very important question theory wise. Uh, it occurs by, due to varicella zoster virus after an infection with a chicken pox in childhood or years. Virus becomes dormant in gasserine ganglion, louder appear in elderly. Uh, with decreased cellular immunity, cancer, AIDS, leukemia, organ transplantation recipient. The clinical fe features of herpes zoster ophthalmicus uh, is the Hutchinson rule in herpes zoster ophthalmicus occurred, ocular involvement is present if in the side or tip of the nose involved, vesicle is present, cutaneous involvement of mesociliary nerve is involved, region of herpes zoster is strictly limited to one side of midline of head, general features onset of illness is sudden with fever, malaise, neurologic pain along the course of affected nerve. Cutaneous lesions appear in the area of involved nerve after three to four days of onset of disease. Red and erythematous lesion erysipelas uh, followed by vesicles occurs. Vesicle B2 form pitted scar with uh, three weeks of activity. Anesthesia of the affected skin, which when associated to post herpetic neuralgia, is known as anesthesia dolorosa. Now, this is the four uh, features in which herpes zoster keratitis uh, represents. First is again like uh, herpes simplex viral keratitis versus SPKs, punctate epithelial keratitis. Uh, um, then uh, second is microdendritis. This is punctate epithelial keratitis. Then this is microdendritic epithelial ulcer. Then th uh, third is similar keratitis. And fourth is visiform keratitis. The ocular lesion in HZO is conjunctivitis with mucopurulent follicular discharge, a mucopurulent discharge, and follicular reaction. Now, the episcleritis and episcleritis can also occur. Punctate epithelial keratitis can be finer course. Microdendritic epithelial ulcer, unlike dendrites of HSV, they are very small in stellate shape and are peripheral. Uh, Neural keratitis, multiple tiny granular deposits surrounded by halo. Of a stromal uh, haze, disiform keratitis, disiform keratitis uh, can be seen also in SZO, neuroparalytic ulcers due to destruction of gastrin uh, ganglion can be seen, exposure keratitis can be seen, and aridocyclitis with epiclitis causing secondary glaucoma can be seen in SZO. And the management of SZO, uh, it uh, includes systemic therapy of herpes zoster with oral antiviral drugs. This significantly decrease pain, fertile vesicularization, uh, stop viral progression, and reduce the incidence as well as severity of keratitis and aritis. Acyclovir in a dose of 800 mg five times a day for 10 days, or well cyclovir in a dose of 500 mg TTS. Analysis include combination of mephenamic acid and paracetamol or pentazosin or even pethidine. Systemic steroid they appear to inhibit development of post herpetic neuralgia when given in high doses. Steroids are commonly recommended in case of developing neurological, uh, neurological complications such as thernopelsin and optic neuritis. Simetriptyline in a dose of 300 mg QID is for 2 to 3 weeks. Amitriptyline uh, should be used to leave the accompanying depression uh, in acute phase of the disease. Local therapy of skin lesion includes antibody corticosteroid skin ointment uh, or lotions. Local therapy for ocular lesion uh, include for zoster keratitis, aridocyclitis, and scleritis include topical steroid eye drops four times a day, cycloplegic such as cyclopendulate eye drops two times and or atropine eye ointment OD, topical acyclovir three percent eye ointment five times a day or about two weeks to prevent secondary infection include topical antibiotics are used. 
for secondary glaucoma 0.5% timolol or 0.5% bitoxolol drops can be used or acetazolamide 250 mg 4 times a day can be given for neuroparalytic corneal ulcer lateral tarsography should be performed for persistent epithelial defect use lubricating artificial tear drop and bandage soft contact lens keratoplasty may be required for refusion rehabilitation of zoster patient with a lens scarring Cutaneous lesions of the herpes zoster of thymicus we can see in this picture. This is how the cutaneous uh, cutaneous vesicles can be seen in herpes zoster of thymicus patients. Canthemoma keratitis. Canthemoma keratitis is other keratitis which is parasitic in nature. Etiology is a, a free lying amoeba found in soil, fresh water, well water, sea water, sewage, and uh, air. It exists in trophozoite and existed forms. Mode of infection include anthemia results from direct corneal contact with any material or water contaminated with organism. Contact lens wearer using homemade saline from contaminated tap water and saline tablets. Mild trauma associated with contaminated vegetable matter, salt water diving, wine blown contaminant, and hot tub use. Trauma with organic matter and exposure to muddy uh, water. Third is for opportunistic infection, which include acanthema keratitis, can also occur as opportunistic infection in patients with herpetic keratitis, bacterial keratitis, bullous keratopathy, neuroparalytic keratitis. Clinical features include burn vision with a severe pain, which is so far out of proportion to the clinical findings. Signs include irregularity of infiltration of epithelium, pseudodendrites, elevated epithelial ridges, and perineural infiltrates. Ring infiltrates or paracentral ring abscess and satellite lesion can be seen in acanthemoma keratitis. So this can come as MCQ. Okay, what all things can be seen in acanthemoma keratitis? Now the diagnosis and treatment includes diagnosis of can be done by staining of corneal stepping and contact lenses with calcofluor white chemifluorescent dye. Black formation of culture over neon nutrient agar enriched with E. coli is characteristic. Topical amoebocyte propamidine isothenate proline 0.1 percent and polyhexamethylene bigranate 0.02 percent and proline meconazole 1 percent neomycin 1.75 percent or chlorhexidine 0.02 percent can be given as a treatment. Topical steroids should be terminated before cessation of anti-amoebal therapy. Now here comes to an end of all types of infectious keratitis. Now other type of corneal ulcer this uh, can it will be discussed. Trophic trop, trophic corneal ulcer. It is due to occurs due to disturbance or and metabolic activities of epithelial cells. This include neuropelalytic uh, keratitis, exposure keratitis. To start with neuropelalytic keratitis occurs in paralysis of sensory nerve fibers. Now the neuroparalytic keratitis, which occurs due to paralysis of the sensory nerve supply of the cornea, causes can be congenital family dysautonomia related syndrome, congenital insensitivity to pain, and hydrotic ectodermal dysplasia. Now the acquired reason can be following alcohol block or electroagulation of vesering ganglion or section of the sensory root of trigeminal nerve for trigeminal neuralgia. A neoplasm pressing on gasserine ganglion, a gasserine ganglion destruction due to acute infection in herpes zoster of thalamus, acute infection of gasserine ganglion by herpes simplex virus, syphilitic neuropathy, environment of the corneal nerves, and leprosy and injury due to gasserine ganglion. These are all are the uh, causes of neuroparalytic keratitis. Pathogenesis can be disturbed in the antiromic corneal reflex occurred due to fifth nerve paralysis. Meta uh, metabolic activity of corneal epithelium is disturbed, leading to accumul accumulation of metabolites. Dema and exfoliation of metrithelial cells occurs in it, causing corneal changes can occur in the presence of a normal brink reflex and normal necrosis secretions. 
Clinical features include characteristic features which are no pain, no cataclysmation, and complete loss of corneal sensations. Ciliary congestion is marked. Corneal shin is dull. Corneal changes are in the form of punctate epithelial erosion in the interpalpebral area, followed by ulceration due to exfoliation of the corneal epithelium. Relapses are very common, even the healed scar which quickly breaks down again. Treatment includes initial treatment with antibiotic and atropine ionment with patching is tried. Healing is usually very slow. Topical nerve growth factor drops and amniotic membrane transplantation can be done. In relapses, it is best to perform lateral transferophy, which should be kept at least one year, along with the prolonged use of artificial tear is also recommended. Now comes exposure keratitis. When eyes are covered insufficiently by the lids and there is loss of protective mechanism of blinking, the condition of exposure keratopathy, keratitis leg of thalamus develops. Causes include includes extreme proptosis, Bell's palsy, or any other cause of facial palsy. Ectopia of severe degree, simply from causing leg of thalamus, deep coma associated with inadequate closure of lids, physiological level of thalamus, occasionally leg of thalamus or leg of thalamus or during sleep may occur in healthy individuals. Pathophysiology includes due to exposure of corneal epithelium, dries up followed by desiccation. Often the epithelium is caused off, invasion by infective organism may occur. Treatment includes prophylaxis. Once leg of thalamus is diagnosed, following measures should be taken to prevent exposure keratitis. Frequent installation of artificial eye drops should be done. Installation of ointment and closure of lids may by a tape or bandage during sleep should be done. Soft bandage contact lens can, should be given. Treatment of cause of exposure, if possible, cause of exposure like proptosis, ectropion, etc. should be treated. Treatment of corneal ulcer should be done and tarsorophy is done. Immune mediated keratitis. This includes modern ulcer. The modern ulcer is chronic serpentinous or rodent ulcer. It is a severe inflammatory peripheral ulcerative keratitis. Etiology is idiopathic in nature. It may be due to ischemic necrosis resulting from vasculitis of limbal vessels. It may be due to effect of enzyme, collagenase, and proteolaconase produced from conjunctiva. Most probably, it is an autoimmune disease. Clinical features include two cl uh, clinical varieties of modern ulcer, benign form and virulent form. Benign include unilateral effects the elderly people and is relatively slow in progression. Virulent affects bilateral younger patient rapidly progressive with a high incidence of scleral involvement. Moran's ulcer, this is how it is peripheral ulcerative keratitis. Here how it looks. It is not infectious in nature. It is mostly immune mediated. Superficial ulcer, which starts at the corneal margin, as you can see in the previous picture, at the margin, with overhanging uh, corneal margin, patches of grain filtrate with collapse to form shallow furrow over the whole cornea. The collapse, uh, the ulcer undermines the epithelium and superficial stromal lamellae. Characteristic whitish overhanging edge base of the ulcer so soon become vascularized. The spread may be self-limiting or progressive. Treatment includes Includes tropical corticosteroid instilled every two to three hours, immunosuppressive therapy with systemic steroids, immunosuppression with cyclosporin or other cytotoxic agent, soft contact lens have also been used in with some relief in pain, lamellar or full thickness corneal graft often melt to vascularize. Now comes corneal degeneration. Depending on the location, these are Axial corneal degeneration, which are fatty degeneration, hyaline degeneration, amyloidosis, calcific degeneration, which is also known as band shaped keratopathy, and Salzman nodular degeneration. Then comes peripheral degeneration, which includes arcus senalis, vox white limbal girdle, hazel headless bodies, terrains uh, marginal degeneration, murens ulcer, pellucid marginal degeneration, and furrow degeneration or senile marginal degeneration.
depending on the etiology it is classified degenerations are classified on age related degeneration which include arcus annalis vox white limbal girdle hazel henle bodies mosaic degeneration pathological degeneration includes fatty degeneration amyloidosis calcific degeneration salzman degeneration nodular degeneration furrow degeneration spheroidal degeneration pellucid marginal degeneration terrans margin degeneration and morin's degeneration narcus annalis it is very common and comes in viva and theory arcus annalis in uh, annular lipid infiltration of corn and periphery this is an age related change bilaterally in 60% of patient increase age young person are uh, in young person it is differential diagnosis of arcus annalis that is arcus juvenalis which is associated with hyperlipidemia the arcus starts in superior inferior quadrant and then progresses circumferentially circumferentially to form a ring which is about 1 mm wide the ring of, of opacity is separate from the limbus by a clear zone it is lucid interval of walked now this is arcus annalis where we can see a whitish degenerative area in peripheral limbus calcific degeneration by check keratopathy degenerative changes associated deposition of calcium salts in bowman's membrane mostly superficial part of stroma in deep layers of epithelium ocular diseases uh, which includes chronic hepatitis and adults children with stills disease classes uh, were by chronic glaucoma chronic keratitis and ocular trauma age related benchip keratopathy is common and affects otherwise healthy cornea metabolic condition include hypercalcemia and chronic renal failure clinical features include intrapalpebral zone with a clear interval between ends of the bench uh, on limbus surface of this opaque band is stippled due to holes in the calcium plaques in the area of the nerve canals of the bowman's membrane the treatment is sedation by chemical removal of deposited calcium salt in an effective treatment corneal epithelium is scraped under local anesthesia uh, 0.01 molar solution of edta that is chelating agent is applied to the denuded cornea with the help of cotton swab more for more about 10 minutes bed or bandage is then applied for 2 to 3 days to allow the epithelium to regenerate phototherapeutic keratectomy and keratoplasty can also be done this is how bench of keratopathy looks Now, spheroidal uh, and pellucid marginal degeneration. It typically occurs in men who works outdoors, especially in hostile climates, due to ultraviolet rays or aging on or corneal disease. Amber colored spheroidal granules, small droplets at the level of uh, Bowman's membrane and anterior stroma in the interpalpebral zone is seen. Pellucid marginal degeneration. It is characterized by corneal thinning involving the periphery of the lower cornea. it induces mild astigmatism which is corrected by spheroidal type of contact lenses now the comes corneal dystrophies is an inherited disorder the cell has some inborn defect pathological changes leading to develop uh, uh, corneal haze normal eyes are free from inflammation and vascularization there is no associated systemic disease these are typically bilaterally Uh, symmetrical manifesting occasionally at birth but more usually during first and second decade of sometimes even later in life classification of corneal dystrophies occur on the uh, on the basis of anatomical site most severely primarily involved as follows anterior dystrophies superficial dystrophies primarily affecting epithelium and bowman's layer uh epithelium basement membrane dystrophy uh, reese buckler dystrophy meesman dystrophy recurrent corneal erosion syndrome stroker called dystrophy stromal dystrophy granular type 1 dystrophy lattice dystrophy macular granular type 2 dystrophy cystinine schindler dystrophy posterior dystrophy affecting primarily the corneal endothelium and basement membrane corneal guttata Fuchs epithelial endothelial dystrophy, late hereditary endothelial dystrophy, posterior polymorphous dystrophy, or scintillating congenital hereditary endothelial dystrophy are the different types of dystrophies on the basis on their location on the layers of the cornea. 
epithelial and subepithelial dystrophies, which includes involve the area of anterior most layer of the cornea in adults, asymptomatic or may be recurrent corneal erosions associated with pain, like remission, blurring of vision. Treatment consists of patching with plain ointment of one or two days. The condition remains spontaneous but can recur. Epithelial basement membrane dystrophy, Reese Buckler's dystrophy, and Meesman dystrophy. Uh, occurs bilaterally puberty, affects central area of the cornea, opacity is due to hyaline deposit between corneal lamellae. Types include granular corneal dystrophy, which is autosomal dominant, which uh, 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 includes hyaline protein deposition. Lattice corneal dystrophy, again autosomal dominant in nature with MRI deposition. Bacterial corneal dystrophy with autosomal recessive in nature, mucopolysaccharide deposition. Posterior dystrophy includes corneal gutter of walk. This is condition is characterized by drop-like excrescences involving entire posterior surface of desmond membrane, mainly found in the peripheral part. Corneal gutter may occur independently or as a part of early stage of Fox road dystrophy. The condition usually occurs in old age and is more common in females than males. It rarely affects the vision and hence treatment is usually not required. Now the Fuchs endothelial epithelial dystrophy, which is progressive bilateral condition, affects females more than males, usually between fifth and seventh decade of life. The stages are first stage of corneal gutter, then uh, edematous stage and a stage of endothelial decompensation. Then comes a stage of villous keratopathy and a stage of scarring. Treatment includes five percent sodium chloride, hypertonic saline, bendy soft contact lens, and penetrating keratoplasty. Ectatic conditions of cornea, keratoconus, conical cornea, non-inflammatory, bilateral 85% ectatic condition of cornea and its axial part. It usually started puberty and progresses slowly. Clinical features, symptoms include patient present with a defective vision due to progressive myopia and regular astigmatism. No improvement after full correction with glasses occurs. Other signs of keratoconus, this is very important as uh, comes in short note and various signs are asked in MCQ and PPG question and theory MCQs. So window reflex is distorted in a presidial disc examination show irregularities of the circle, keratometric depth, extreme malignment of the myas, photokeratoscopy reveals distortion of the circles, slit lamp examination may show thinning and ectasia of the central cornea opacity of the apex and flesher ring the base of the cone holes in the adjustment in women's membrane. Very fine vertical deep stromal stria, walk line will appear with external pressure on the globe are peculiar feature. On retinoscopy, a yawning reflex or seizure reflex and high oblique or irregular astigmatism often. On distant direct ophthalmoscopy, uh, an annular dark shadow due to total internal reflection of light is seen, which separate the central and peripheral areas of the cornea. All dropped reflex. Munson sign is that is localized bulging of lower lid when patient looks down in a positive and late stages. These are the various signs which should be seen if they are seen in keratoconus. Keratoconus is the thinning of the cornea. Confirmation, this is how placido uh, um, disc myas occurs in keratoconus and this is the clinical picture of the Munson sign where uh, there is a bulging of lower lid due to corneal uh, ectasia. And this is the characteristic feature of keratoconus. The association of keratoconus may be associated with ocular condition, which can be ectopia lentis, congenital cataract, aniridia, retinitis pigmentosa, and vernal keratoconjunctivitis. The semi condition which are associated with um, keratoconus are Marfan syndrome, atopy, Down syndrome, Ehlers Danlos syndrome, osteogenesis imperfecta, and mitral wall prolapse. Treatment include glasses to correct irregular astigmatism, contact lenses, which include rigid gas permeable, usually improve the vision in early cases. In late stages, penetrating keratoplasty may be required in tags, the intracorneal ring segments. Another keratoplasty. Keratoplasty is nothing but it is also known as corneal grafting and corneal transplantation. The patients uh, in this patient's disease cornea is replaced by donor's healthy cornea. Types include penetrating corneal keratoplasty of full thickness type and nimble keratoplasty of partial thickness type. 
indication includes optical indication which is due to uh, to correct improved vision important indication are corneal opacity bullous keratopathy corneal dystrophy and advanced keratoconus therapeutic treatments to replace inflamed cornea not respond to to the conventional therapy tectonic graft that is to restore the integrity of eyeball after corneal perforation and mild corneal thinning evaluation of donor cornea uh, the donor cornea should be removed as early as possible within 6 hours of the death so it's in the evaluation of the cornea of the uh, corneal donation is done on the basis of epithelial defects uh, corneal stromal clarity arcus analysis basement member a membrane and endothelium methods of corneal preservation after uh, uh, corneal donation uh, eye donation your corneal donation is short term preservation is done up to 48 hours the whole growth is preserved with 40 degree temperature in a moist chamber in intermediate storage media which is done uh, storage is done up to 2 weeks of donor cornea and can be done in mccary kaufman mk media and various coordinating surface and this media such as optosome medium long term storage is up to 35 days is done by organ culture surgical technique excision of donor corneal button the donor corneal button should be cut 0.25 mm larger than the recipient uh, take care not to damage the endothelium second excision of recipient corneal button is done with the help of corneal refine of 7.5 mm to 8 mm in size a partial thickness incision is made in the host cornea then the anterior chamber is entered with the help of razor blade knife excision is completed using corneal sclera scissors After this, sutureum corneal graft into the host cell is done with either continuous or interrupted ten zero nine one sutures. This is how corneal transplantation is done. Keratoplasty is done. Same steps are seen in this picture. First step: excision of donor cornea. Second and third step show excision of recipient corneal button. Third, this step show suturing. And then. Uh, suturing in continuous uh, uh, pattern, interrupted sutures. Sorry, this is how keratoplasty is done. So in this way, I come to an end of all the diseases of the cornea, all types of keratitis, infectious and immunological keratitis, and this various degeneration in the stages of keratitis, and also their management and uh, a brief of keratoplasty and eye donation and their storage media. Thank you.